see how many people we can upset. <laughs> That's right. We're a couple of opinionated uh, millennials. Yeah, let's, we've, we've got a lot to say. Yeah, let's let's like just take all the stereotypes and then just like whatever ones the least popular. Let's just agree with those and we'll just uh... just roll over basically <laughs> just to whatever's politically correct. <laughs> and oh, this... I was thinking the opposite. Oh, the opposite. Yeah. Uh, I can never tell. No, nothing sells like controversy. Yeah, I can never tell with these millennials. <laughs> Goddamn millennials. Eh? Okay, this. Uh, welcome to the podcast. This is Cl- man. I just blew my own intro. I've never blown my you own gonna, intro. Let's try it again. <laughs> my fourth, e- my fourth year in YouTube, but I've never blown my own intro <laughs> until so, this podcast. So is this like something cool, like unique enough that we're we're keeping it? Are we still rolling? Or we're already we? off to a rough start here. <laughs> No, let's keep going. Okay, anyways, what is up, guys? Klaus next year. This is the KX Podcast Snowflake Edition. We finally hit double digits. 1-0 with Christian Mello. Hey. How are you doing so far? Uh, I'm, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. I appreciate being out here. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate your time. Um, so me and Christian met a long time ago. Probably would have been in junior high. Yeah. At at a at a youth group, I guess. Or Tyler's birthday party. Tyler, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we played guitar together in uh, the church band, and I guess our friendship has just kind of grown and developed in very weird, strange ways, including oh, video games, anime conventions, everything under the sun, really. Yeah, lots of wing nights, lots of late night coffees. Yeah, yeah. Christian was also a groomsman at my wedding. So he is a friend that I hold very dear to my heart. <laughs> so for the, the subject of this podcast, eh, this podcast, we're, t- we're doing it a little bit different than the other podcasts because the other podcasts I had very much uh, a theme and a point that I was trying to get across. And this one isn't so much like that. It's more we have like, I guess... a. a I guess kind of an underlying theme that we're talking about, but we're going to really go in whatever direction the conversation takes us. Um, but but the first thing that I wanted to talk about is this whole millennial thing. Because me, me and Christian are both millennials. And millennials are really, really taking some heat right now. And they have been, I guess, for the past couple of years because of this whole, like... I don't really know why or when it started with the, like the development of like social media maybe like we're we're becoming adults right and we're starting to have an impact in the world so it's we're we have responsibilities now we have societal responsibilities so i guess if if the upper generations don't think we're taking that seriously or aren't doing that properly it, they, they might see fit to criticize us yeah And I guess, like, the generation before us, very much so, I don't know, maybe adopted a lifestyle and, like, a sense of purpose based on what their parents did. Because at that time, there was, it was very much so, like, what, like, uh, I'm going to try not to, like, pull words out of the air here, but, like, post-industrial revolution, where, like, it's really important to get a job and work hard every single day and provide for your family and, like... That's the underlying rule, and you respect your parents, and you do it. You're told, like lots of lots of jobs and trades, yeah, and that sort. Yeah, and, and we don't. I guess the generation coming up now, we don't we don't have this this like the background of war and like immigration is becoming less vivid and real. I guess people growing up now don't really have a, a solid grasp on like. Maybe their roots. I don't know. Uh, not not in North America, I mm. I don't think because there's most definitely wars happening, but not here. Yeah. Um. Just just in North America, like yeah, I always I always have to touch on that because we we come at everything with such a biased perspective, and we have to remember that the rest of the world is not like us. <laughs> we have it pretty good. Yeah. Um. And, and one thing I, I thought we should mention before we go too far with this is we, we should preface this entire conversation with, <laughs> like, we're talking about stereotypes here. We're talking about right. millennial stereotypes, Gen X stereotypes, whatever. It's like, this by no means, if you're a millennial, does all of this apply to you. Yes. Right? Like, this whole thing is 
it should be prefaced with a, a, a trigger warning like hey <laughs> this is just what the the like accepted belief is or, yeah. or most popular uh, trigger words yes yes very words. much I mean I get I get like frankly I get pissed off all the time by these <laughs> stereotypes because I and most of the people in my life work very hard most millennials I know don't fall into the stereotype we are all living very much in the culture that might be kind of associated with the stereotype. Uh, yeah, and like when when they talk about stereotyping millennials, it's like let's let's take a step back and and think about who we're talking about here. Like millennials, what what are they? What generation is that? That's like eighties to two thousands born, yeah. right? Uh, that's like millennials now are aged between eighteen. And like 38. Oh, right? I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, just s- small. So what uh, was what was before us? Do you know? Uh, Gen X, and, and then there, before then that was the, the baby boomers. But wasn't there a Gen X? We're, uh, Gen we're y also Gen Y. Oh, we're also Gen Y. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's that's good to know. Um, yeah, and I mean, no matter what generation you're born into we will have a tendency to think that the generation that comes after us is worse, it, right? Because it's not the generation we lived in. Exactly. Like, I, I'm willing to bet that when we hit the ripe old age of 80, whoever's 18 at the time, we're going to be yeah. not thinking too highly of them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, we already, like, like, like I'm, I'm 23, and, and I'm already starting to notice, like, trends that are going on with youth that I don't connect to. You know, mm-hmm. like we're not old by any means. We're in our early twenties, but it's it's starting to become obvious that there are trends happening that we're not a part of anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, like I, I catch myself often actually looking at these kids nose deep into iPads at the the age of ten, or or you, you see three year olds asking for their parents' smartphones, right? And I find myself getting getting angry yeah. at, at already at the younger generation, yeah. and I almost feel like it should be our duty to like kind of catch ourselves Me when too. we when we see ourselves getting angry at younger generations because if if that's what we're going to do then we're no better than the baby boomers that are that are making fun of us right now or, or talking about how we're ruining everything right that's true yeah i don't know i kind of have mixed feelings about that because when i see like a toddler on an ipad like there are certain scenarios where, like, if I see it on a plane or something, it's like the, the kid is distracted, the kid's whatever in its own world. Like, great, that's great for everybody. Mm-hmm. But, like, at what point is that not good for a child yeah. to have that much exposure to what has so much potential? We had, we hadn't, like, I mean, when we grew up, we didn't have access to internet at our fingertips. I just, mm-hmm. I wonder how that's going to change the minds of the people next it's, yeah it's it's interesting because in like let's let's look at this from uh, from both sides with it with the smartphone argument because there's the um you shouldn't rely on that but but why why shouldn't they rely on that are we going to lose it anytime soon mm-hmm. if if history has shown us anything it's that our technology is just going to get better and smarter and and faster and more useful right so so why shouldn't they rely on it mm-hmm right and and then there's the the other aspect where it's like well it it could be like physically bad it could be uh it, it could affect their social skills there's lots of just very obvious things that are wrong with it but but the main thing that i feel that a lot of people forget to talk about is well why should why shouldn't we rely on it mm. in what situation am i not going to have this technology other yeah. than this emergency like oh you're you're trapped in a desert and you don't have yeah. your phone it's like well how did i get there does that <laughs> probably looking exist? for water <laughs> <laughs> yeah no that's that's true and it's like every chance that i have to use any kind of mental math skills it's right to the phone calculator <laughs> it's like why why wouldn't i have this tool at my disposal mm-hmm. and it's only going to continue to be more a part of me yeah. so i think we're just maybe evolving to the like at a rate where we don't need to rely on such, I don't know, old skills that we needed to. Yeah. Just like well, we don't need to hunt anymore. Well, well, in North America, at least. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, from an educational 
perspective, yes, we do need to learn those skills. Like you're, you're saying we don't need to re rely on a lot of these skills, but it's like we need to, to learn them to be educated, right? Right. Like, like you're still going to have to teach kids math. You're still going to have to teach kids how to spell. You're not going to just be this hands-free, don't think about anything, post-apocalyptic, idiocracy yeah. world, right? <laughs> That's true. Yeah, it's still... Uh, yeah, I, yeah. From an educational perspective, it's all still very important. Um, but like back to the to the iPad thing, um, and you're right. I agree with you because as technology is is evolving, we're we're going to if we resist it, it's just going to be hard, and we're going to conflict with the future generations. So it's best to just adapt with it. But at the same time, like the human body is evolving at a much slower rate than our technology is and what concerns me is that sure you have a toddler on an ipad and that's fine and that's normal and like they're going to have even more advanced tech when they're older than we have now but like their bodies are still going to need an hour of exercise a day if they're 10 years old you know what i mean that's the thing yeah. that scares me they're going to grow up w more in homes or whatever that's more tech technologically advanced than they're Parents might just not have the education that a lot of people do, and they're not going to know to send their kids out for an hour a day. And, and the phys ed system is already being pushed out of the education system. Yeah, it's well, I think it's all about balance, of course, is the obvious answer. Mm -hmm. But I, I think we need to look at technology the right way. Um, like it's it's a tool right like when people say we rely on technology it's because it's it's a tool right before smartphones people would re rely on calculators or before that they would re rely on i don't know an abacus right? right like it's it's a tool and and technology should be used at, as a tool and and things start getting muddled up when your technology is also your source of entertainment right mm. so so I think, yes, technology as a tool, use it all the time. That's awesome. But if you're going to go on your phone to use your calculator, don't stop by Facebook and Instagram and Twitter on the way, right? And that's, and that's where the, what you're talking about comes into play where we're not actually doing things. If we used our, our tools as tools instead of entertainment, right. then maybe we would have more time to to be physical and, and realize that there's this world out there outside yeah. of the screen. Um, and, and I hope that's something that, that kids still realize, like they're still selling soccer balls at Walmart. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure people are buying them and kids yeah. are playing with them. Well, that's, yeah. I mean, kids still just as their bodies develop, they need to run and they need to scream and they need to jump and they need to eat dirt and they need to like <laughs> stimulate their senses, you know? That's never going to change, even though technology is increasing. So I guess we don't have to worry too much about that. Yeah, it's and I think it. at the end of the day, it comes down to a case-by-case -case basis, right? Like, yeah. if I'm not active, it's not because I, I w was raised in this society that told me not to be active. It's because I didn't like playing sports as a kid yeah. and, and didn't upkeep my, my physical health. That's the reason that someone like me might not be active. Right, it's a it's a personal choice. It's not a a everyone was doing this, therefore I did this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's true. Yeah, it, it is very much case by case, and like people are always products of their environment. They're products of their friends and their parents, and like mm -hmm. the choices that they make. Yeah, it just goes back to the hey, this this is just a stereotype, right? Like yeah. this whole yeah. you can't categorize an entire generation consisting of people aged 18 to 38 as one and the same yeah right that's that's way too much where you're all we're all responsible for ourselves at the end of the day yeah and i mean tech has so much like mobile stuff like has um workout apps you know if, if i'm too lazy to go to the gym and i don't want to make a workout for myself i just youtube hit workout you can do it on the living room floor and, and perfect example of, of what I said, using your technology as a tool, as, as it should be in a lot of cases. Yeah. Yeah. Have you heard about that, like, the whole, like, addiction to notifications? Like, getting hits of dopamine every time you open your phone? Uh, 
Yeah, it's it's very um, makes you very is neurotic the right word? You're just like you're chasing the the possibility that somebody's trying to to reach out to you or somebody's mm-hmm. like somebody's notifying you about something and it works the same way as it does when you like when you're gambling with, it, when you pull a slot machine. Yeah, it, it it plays on. Well, I think there's there's even more to the social media because not only is it the pull of the slot machine, like, ooh, what notification am I going to get? Is it a like? Is it a comment? Is it yeah. a share? But I think there's also the introduction of, of vanity in there, right? Because whatever that notification is, it's about you and it plays off of your narcissism, yeah. right? It's like, ooh, somebody cares about me, 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 right? Yeah. And it's it's crazy because, like, Facebook does, like, and, and they've they've talked about this in, like, interviews that they, they, they know that this is happening and they're they're specifically tweaking their app for that. I mean, that's why you get notifications about everything. If you're in a Facebook group and someone comments on something that you like and you're getting notifications, you have to like turn off notifications. Oh yeah. Because you keep getting things from people that are commenting that you don't care about. Oh yeah. You know, you just keep getting those notifications, which makes you feel really good. <laughs> then you're just like, wow, that was a waste of my time. Yeah, it's. I don't know. I think that's uh, if we want to move back towards. Uh, millennials here i think Mm -hmm. that's uh why we get a lot of of criticism uh that people say millennials are self-centered they see us posting about ourselves talking about ourselves worrying about our social media image right there's this this vanity that people Mm -hmm. associate with our generation yeah and i mean like it's it's not our fault or kids growing up it's not their fault. They're growing up with this. They didn't make the tech. It's just been handed to them. You know, the, this this uh, this addiction that's been handed out in the form of a cell phone, like to all these kids growing up with that, that's like, it's frightening, you know? It's, it's mm-hmm. If you are upset about the millennials, you got to look at the people that came before it because they paved the way. Yeah. Like, it's... And... and on the other end, it's just going to get worse, right? Like, we're not this generation of, of, of self-centered people because we're different, and that's just how our generation is. We're a product of, of this social media environment, and let's face it, social media isn't going away, right? So this is just, you're looking at the future here, right? Like, this is the self-centeredness that you're going to see in the generation below us and the generation to come, right? If, if you're going to go ahead and call us self-centered, that's what you have to look forward to because anybody who grows up in a social media environment is going to turn out this way. And that's mm-hmm. just, at least I think, is, is just the inevitability of it. Yeah, it's, I mean, it just becomes a part of your life. I mean, like, like I, I got into Snapchat, and we, we've talked about Snapchat often. Oh, you know what I think about Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I got into it maybe, like, a year or two ago. And it's crazy how, like, I wouldn't just, like, put just, like, random updates about where I am, what I'm doing. When I was on Instagram and Facebook, like, I wouldn't just do that because the posts had so much, like, weight to them. But on mm-hmm. Snapchat, it's just, like... I'm somewhere and I'm like, oh man, I'm doing something that's out of my routine. I better update the world. And that's just, that just, the thought just comes to my head. Like, I don't even have control over it. Mm-hmm. It just feels like it's just an essential part of what you do. It's, it's so disposable. It's so easy to just throw out a picture that you know isn't going to clog up anything, right? You can toss an image out there for the world. They can see it if they want. They could ignore it if they don't want and then the next day, it's gone, right? That's It's so beautifully simple that there is no concern with it, right? So what, your picture wasn't perfect or you looked or your hair wasn't great that day. Like, nobody's gonna save it. Like, it's gone tomorrow, right? Yeah. There's, it, there's something so simple and so, uh, I don't know, that, that makes you wanna repost, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's definitely, like, a lot of people pick and choose their apps. That's a, mm-hmm. that's a good thing. I mean, I, like, as someone who wants to get into business and marketing, like, I have to get into all these social media apps. I have to, because that's how, that's how you get your uh, messages across. That's how you get your pictures and videos and content across. So if you want to grow as an entrepreneur and, 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 like, 
grow business in today's day and age, that's the way to do it. Which is like not something that's really taught much in business schools anymore because you had to be, you had to have connections and resources. But nowadays you can become famous if you're just good with Instagram and hashtags. Yeah, you got if, celebrities everywhere. Man, if, if you show up to school one day with white vans, you can be <laughs> famous, right? Literally, just like that. Like, if you, if you go to Walmart and, and yodel in the middle of an aisle, you can get famous, right? Oh, like, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We don't need these these connections. Like, And I think that's... Sorry, I, I keep wanting to try, tie this back into the millennial conversation. That's good. I'm, I'm <laughs> glad you're doing that. I'm not. Because, <laughs> like, well, this, this conversation is so broad, it's so easy to get sidetracked. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that's goes to show how how hard work isn't the same anymore right like people yes. criticize millennials for being lazy right like someone might look at you 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 could be on your phone all day you could be on your computer all day and, and an older person might look at you and think you're lazy however you just might be on there updating the the business pages on your social media getting more followers getting making sales getting customers right hard work doesn't mean going outside and and breaking your back doing god knows what uh yeah. it it can be just sitting in your living room and and making social media posts and getting exposure yeah right it's this this work environment has evolved into something so different like Somebody can live their entire lives in this era without ever having to do any hard physical labor for a job. Yeah. No, that's, that's, you hit the nail on the head right there. Like, like, I know, like, personally, I've spent, like, an hour on Instagram going through hashtags and following the right people with the right hashtags so that they'll follow me back and maybe check me out. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I've spent an hour doing that. It looks like I'm just mindlessly on my phone. So this is this is really going to change, I guess, the way that people start marketing. And like as TV kind of phases out and the internet phases in, we're kind of in a, a really weird phase where we don't really know how the future is going to evolve, how businesses are going to develop, and like how, I guess, what millennials are going to do in the future. Because it's, it's only going to last so long when, when we get hated on for being on our phones when you know we become adults yeah. all the people well, i mean sorry to get morbid but all the people yeah. hating on us they're gonna be dead one day yeah they're not gonna be around we're gonna be in charge right yeah exactly and i, I think that you, you said that very well that hard work and labor isn't what it used to be it doesn't mean necessarily that you need to go have a nine-to-five job and slave away outside and like mm-hmm. maybe the people before us don't really don't really appreciate or recognize labor if they don't see the the result immediately or they see the sweat on the brow yeah i don't know what it is but, but i mean if you want to if you could get one of the one of those people who who do identify with the hard work honestly it's like if you could do that hard work or if you could not do that hard work like like let's talk about and i'm not talking about like some sort of artwork or something that that you you can see a lot of pride in that you put a lot of passion into like say you work on a construction site you're hand bombing drywall right if you could get a machine to do that for you would you yeah i'd like to think that literally everybody would say yes like that's why we're building these machines to do these jobs for us because at the end of the day nobody wants to hand bomb drywall nobody wants to <laughs> to do all these chores nobody wants to be on a chainsaw all day or split wood all day or do all these crazy back-breaking yeah. activities. Yeah, well, I guess that there's this kind of a, a sense of pride that comes with that, I guess. That's e- there, easy to recognize. There is, yeah. And, and a huge respect to anybody who has worked those jobs. Like, yeah. I know I couldn't, right? And and maybe that makes you you better than me, but, like, at the end of the day, if I'm given the choice, I'm going to take, oh. take the easy way well, out. Absolutely. I mean, that's how the brain is designed, <laughs> right? I mean, I'm I'm built for that kind of situation, so I would I would be fine in it. But if you're not, then it would make sense that you, your brain would go the path of least resistance, mm-hmm. whatever keeps you safe at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, and I mean that's why our our society is evolving that way, right? We we make these devices to make 
life easier, right? That's why we develop all the all these computers and these technologies so we can do things better, faster, more efficiently. Because because it makes our work easier, it makes our job easier. Yeah. It doesn't that doesn't make us lazy? If anything, that that makes us more efficient. We're getting more work done than anybody who did work in a in a previous manner could. Yeah. Right. And I think what also what generations before us don't recognize is that like we're growing up in an, in an, uh, a society that's already pretty well established and like the you know like inflation is only going in one direction and like like school debt which has been pounded into our heads since we were kids is essential if you want to be successful we have these mountains of school debt you know it's it's harder to buy a house now than it ever has been they don't recognize the environment that we have been you know forced to grow up in I don't, I don't know if force is the right word but we have to grow up in it and we have to do all these things to survive and it's I don't know would you agree that it's harder now to do a lot of these things that were like more simple um, when our parents had to do them I don't know it's it's hard not knowing truly what they've been through right like like who can say for sure it's it's this I don't know. I, I want to intru- introduce this idea of, uh, I, they talked about it a lot in my anthropology class I took last year, of uh, cultural relativism, uh, which means that every culture is good relative to its environment, mm-hmm. right? Just because we're more technologically advanced than a, a town in Africa doesn't mean that we're better. Right, we are good given our resources and knowledge, and they're good given their resources and knowledge. Right, mm. and I think that also applies to if I take a, a page out of my professor's book and just make up a word on the fly, uh, generational relativism, um, where every generation is good relative to to what we we've grown up to, right? And and you know maybe maybe we do have it harder when it comes to to buying houses, when it comes to making money paying off school right but like there's if with there's there's got to be some give and take right i'm sure we have things a lot easier in areas where where a few older generations had it a lot harder well for sure yeah and i, I like that you said relative because that's that's really important because like um let's like in a sense of stress the body physiologically responds to stress the same no matter where you're living in the world no matter what you're dealing with it's the same mm-hmm. physiological response okay. stress so you can't you don't stress more because you got the something that you didn't like versus you have to go do something like stress is, is this you can have more stress or less stress but your body responds the same so while you may have had a lot of stress at one point working your nine to five every day or i don't know like getting the wood to heat your house versus someone who is struggling to pay their gas and pay their bills and they're you're 20 years old and trying to survive in this already established world the stress is relative to you and what you're and what you're doing and no yeah. matter where you are you're responding to it the same as your parents would have yeah like like who are they to say that their stress is superior to ours exactly stress? exactly i mean it's the same way with i mean happiness and and anger and like it, it's not it's not any less you know like if you if you talk to somebody who's like having a bad day and you say oh man you think that's a bad day i've had a bad day and it's like well their stress was just as relevant as yours mm-hmm. you yeah know? you might not be used to having really bad days but someone who's accustomed to it might be able to handle it better so i i don't think it's fair to somebody uh, uh, if someone who is used to a lot of stress looks down on somebody and says, "Oh, that's nothing," it's it's relative, like yeah. we said. Yeah. So why why do you think like why do you think that there is all that hate for millennials? Do you think that there's something unique about millennials, or do you think that it's just the classic generations not I, liking and approving? I I think it's I think it's the classic. Like I I put in a little bit of research during my lunch break at work today. Just looking at, at critiques people had and whatnot, and uh, it, it's funny uh, what what older generations have criticized the younger generations for. Like currently, it's the smartphone, right? These darn kids and their smartphones can't do anything without it. 
before that it was dang kids and and their and their televisions yeah right oh wasting all their time right and before that if you would believe it it was books mm -hmm. i've heard that yeah there was a generation that thought their their the younger generation below them were going to be failures because they're reading too many books yeah reading the newspapers Right, like on the sidewalk. It's it's such a, a a case of just generational relativism and a, attention. Where is the attention at? Yeah, everyone's um, competing for your attention. It doesn't matter if it's a newspaper or a Facebook article. It's just the same demand for attention. Well, one thing I've seen a lot when when older people complain that millennials are oversensitive is a, a specific complaint I saw is. Oh, they grew up getting participation trophies, right? We grew up um, not having to, and this ties into not having to work for anything, and this idea that we're lazy, that we just show up and things get handed to us and we don't have to work hard. But the question that I'd like to pose, which is kind of funny, is who gave us those participation trophies? Yeah. It wasn't us. I didn't make those participation ribbons. If I was the one making the ribbons, I would have given myself all first place. <laughs> uh, and so, so I think, and, and I don't want to play the blame game because I don't think anybody's wrong or right. I think this is a very gray matter. But the people who are blaming us for being entitled and lazy and just not earning anything via participation trophies, those are the same people that said, oh, you participated, here's a trophy. You cannot both create this environment that is potentially toxic and then blame us for being toxic, for being in that environment. Like, yeah. you created it. Uh, and I just, I just thought that was almost... A comment that is just so easily dismissed, it's it's hilarious. Like Ironic. I don't, I don't I understand how you can blame us for something that you did to us. Uh, so I just thought that was uh, interesting. And uh, to talk again about the uh, this idea uh, that people think millennials are are disrespectful, but I think uh, uh, Zach put it very well. Um, where where he said his dad always taught him that respect is is earned not given and and I feel like like I also grew up with that and our whole generation grew up with that this idea that we have no default respect value for anyone right it doesn't matter who you are not to say that I disrespect you but if I don't know anything about you I'm not going to automatically respect you like when I got uh, a new job last summer and I got a new boss, I didn't automatically respect him because he was my boss. Uh, when I started respecting him, it was because I would go to him with a job I was doing and I would ask him, hey, I'm done this job, uh, can you stamp this for me? And he would say, no, because the these things are wrong. And I would say, Oh, what's what's wrong with them? What what is the the issue here? He's like, well, you can't do this because of this, and you can't do this because of these reasons. And if you do this, this won't work. And and he explained to me what I was doing wrong, and and through that he he earned my respect. He proved to me that he he is the boss. He is the most intelligent person in that building, deserving of everybody's respect. But until that point. I had no reason to respect him. He was just the guy that sat in the big office. Um, so I think that's that's a really important thing to to realize. I don't think it's uh, necessarily a good thing or a bad thing, but but I don't think it's fair to look at millennials and say, hey, they're disrespectful. It's just that we've been ingrained with this idea that you need to earn respect. Yeah, it's a different it's a different mindset where like I know that there was a point in my life I realized where. I was told by people that I was to respect them. And at some point when I was growing up, I realized that I'll, I'll be the boss of that. You know, <laughs> like I think I'll, I'll decide whether or not I'm going to respect you. I don't think you get to tell me that I'm going to respect you. I, I see that you're in a place of authority that does. I'm going to, I'm going to do what you say, 
I'm going to do what you say, you know, as, as well as I, I think is appropriate, but that doesn't mean that I have to like you. doesn't mean that I have to mm-hmm. respect you. Yeah, and I, I don't mean call your boss names or be mean to him. <laughs> or, I don't or think an abs- uh, yeah. I don't think an absence of respect is by nature disrespect. Like, there, there is yeah, exactly, and and there there is this order of natural hierarchy. Like in in a work scenario, like your boss is in charge. Your boss, like if if you have a good idea, your boss can just say no, and it doesn't matter how much better your idea was from uh, than his, because he's the boss, he says no. But it's 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 important to separate. This idea of, of respect and and uh, position, and I think the perfect example is is that of Donald Trump, right? He is the most important man in America, and there's no doubt that he's important. He's got a lot of power, right? He's in charge of a lot of things. But all I know about Donald Trump living here in Canada is is that he said some racist stuff that I really don't like. And I don't exactly respect him, right? Yeah. But Not you, to get political. Yeah, yeah. no, I, yeah, that's just like, there's a difference between recognizing somebody's in a place of power versus respecting Res- them. Respecting why they're And, and just there. because of that, you know? And I think we are also growing up in a generation where we don't see that power deems respect. Mm-hmm. You know? It doesn't, it just, I think at one point it went hand in hand. that There was ranking and status, but... Yeah. It's not so much that way anymore. Yeah, well, I mean, when you worked at a, like when you had your uh, your mom and pop grocery store and the dad was in charge of all the kids who worked there, it made sense. The dad had the respect, he had the power, he was in charge. But now when the dad is just a guy who has 50 employees that aren't related to him, it's like, like how, do you, how do you control that? Who's to say that one of those 50 employees isn't smarter or better equipped than the boss or even on a grander scale look at a company like walmart i wouldn't even wager to guess how many employees they have i am willing to bet that at least one of them is more worthy of respect and authority than whoever's at the top that's that that's exactly that you can't manage respect you can't tell someone to respect you respect can't be expected Mm because respect is something that you well, decide for yourself. Even if yeah. someone says you respect that person, and then all of a sudden you will just start treating them maybe you know, in a more humble fashion, but that doesn't mean you'll respect them. Even if you're yeah. acting like you respect them, it's, it can be false. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that that's all about the uh, this free speech issue that's been brought up a lot in the past couple of years. It's you you can't control speech. You can't control thought. Right? Like. Like, if you want to keep your job, you will outwardly, uh, externally show uh, signs of respect to your boss. But inside, you might be like, oh, God, I hate him. He's such a dick. <laughs> right? Like, there's there's a difference. You, you, you can't control the free speech. You can tell someone, respect someone all you want, but no one's ever is going to control what's inside your head. Right? Yeah, exactly. And it, maybe our generation just has an awareness of that. That maybe wasn't there before. Might be yeah. all that it is. I think we're we're in a generation of of choices, right? Like we we don't live in a world anymore where it's like your town didn't have a Home Depot. Well, you're stuck at Rona's, right? If I don't like the selection in my city of what whatever store, I hop online and I have the world selection, right? We have learned as a generation, and I think as an entire world at this point, is that we don't need to be complacent anymore, right? Like, some people might have grown up in a world where it's like, you get you get a job, and no matter how awful your boss is, you have to you have to deal with it because there's no other choice, right? But we are in such a world of choice now. You can work down down your street there's probably 50 different jobs you could work at right not to say that these jobs are readily available uh but it's but we have so many choices that we have learned that we don't have to just give in to anything 
ever because there's always a better choice. Yeah, and that's just yeah, that's just the nature of the environment that we're growing up in. And and I think uh, to to tie this whole conversation into the idea, because because all your podcasts have been about health in one way or another, physical health, mental health, spiritual yeah. health, right? And I, I think when we talk about a lot of this, we can tie this into societal health, mm-hmm. health as, as an entire collective of, of people. And I think we, we can do well to, to remember how these, these old people have, have hated on us and how that made us feel and, and do well to remember that. So when we're the old ones, we're not looking down on somebody else, mm. right? And you might think that, oh well, that's that's easy. I'll just I'll just be good, right? But it's like you can't even understand what what the future is going to hold, right? Like, uh, let's let's tie this into an example. Uh, old people generations ago, uh, there were, there was a lot of racism, right? And the the young generation growing up was was trying to tell them, well, it's just skin color. It's not a big deal. And and the the older generation wouldn't have it, right? And then they phased out. And it's like, okay, skin color is fine now. We're used to, we're, all skin colors are good, whatever. And then sexual preference became a mm-hmm. thing, right? And, and the older generation was like, oh, these darn gay people, right? And then as they phased out, uh, gay people became okay that's what we're dealing with right now that the, the acceptance of, of homosexuals uh but we don't know what our struggle is going to be right mm. like maybe when we're old we're going to be like oh these darn fish people right <laughs> like, like we don't know and and we would do well to remember that whatever the future has in hold it has in store like not to to criticize it like we might not need to understand it but just just be acceptant or be tolerant of it, yeah. you know, because we we don't know. There's there's no way to know. <laughs> yeah, I would like to think that we that would be easier for us than generations before us because we are so well connected with the world in ways that our parents weren't. We have such a broader perspective. That that's true, but you would also think it would be easy for our current generation to accept homosexuals, given that they had already accepted different races oh that's a very good point that's right a very good point so yeah. even though we can accept in our current generation homosexuals and and different races doesn't mean that we'll necessarily be able to accept whatever comes next cybernetic parts or something exactly yeah. the deus ex yeah. right taking like body mods yeah right? yeah that's true do you have any like what do you think i guess do you have any predictions for what the future might hold for millennials growing up in this world? I think it's just more tech. And it might not be good tech, but it's going to be lots of tech because yeah. that's all we seem to care about right now. Uh, which is, it's, it's kind of interesting and it's a bit of a side topic, but I find it strange that we're investing into this virtual world right like there's so many jobs for computer scientists to create websites and programs but in reality they don't really exist without electricity right if if one day electricity were to disappear all these jobs would be useless all mm. these years that we've been spent building up all this this virtual technology it, it wouldn't matter and I just, I, I just think that's really interesting. It's a bit yeah. of a side topic. It's a lot to unpack. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I mean, like, we're just kind of toying with the idea of, like, the electric car. But, I mean, we might we might discover some new energy resource. That's even better than electricity. Yeah. Better for the, better for the environment, whatever it is. Um, I think, from my perspective in the future, it's, it's your... I think you're absolutely right and that technology is going to continue to increase and will adapt and whatever it is. But I think, um, I guess kind of to tie it back into health and fitness a little bit, the, the demand of the body, like I mentioned earlier, is evolving at a much slower rate. And I think we will always have a need and demand for health and fitness, no matter what generation you're growing up in. And I think that we should be cautious with technology. We can use it as a tool, which can be helpful and, and make everything a lot easier to manage but I mean like at the same time like 
um, you know, heart disease is the number one killer in North America, and that is because buildups of cholesterol and high blood pressure and like things that are associated with living a sedentary life. So I guess, I mean, if anything, maybe if we have an increase in technology and an increase in sedentary lifestyles, people get super lazy, not just sedentary, but like lazy, you know, it might be a good, like a a cue for the government to start pushing for health and fitness movements. You know, we might need to reach a certain point in technology when we have to balance the scale again. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And and the one uh, uh, media, fictional example that I think ties in perfectly to what you're saying is the movie WALL-E, if, mm-hmm. if you recall that I one. I always think of that movie. Where where it's, it's future, we're living on a spaceship because Earth's no good anymore, and everyone's fat because yeah. we've develop so much technology we we can literally do nothing and and be okay well okay in quotations um but that's it, it's scary because that almost sounds like where we're headed right i mean why are we developing all the all these robotics and and electric things and and virtual environments is is the hot topic now everybody's into virtual reality right yeah why would we like it seems like the end goal of all this automation is for us to not do anything. Yeah. In an ideal world, uh, with all this, all these advances, it seems like the end goal is for the human to not have to do anything, mm-hmm. right? And I think the struggle there is that we should want to do things, mm-hmm. and 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 like you said, push health and fitness. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's dangerous too because like when you when the end goal is to, to not have to do anything, like it's not like your body's going to be like, "Whoa, we're getting too sedentary here. It's time to go do something." Your brain <laughs> is going to like adapt to that and be like, "Sweet, this is the safest option. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to die. My chances oh, of doing immediately. this <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, my the more that I do this, the lower my risk is on a daily basis of getting into trouble. So your brain is going to work with that technology increase because it's in the benefit of your survival yeah so so then that begs the question that if it's if we're working to develop a society where it seems that the end goal is complete automation where we don't have to do anything um should we be doing that should we be working in that direction like i just spent my last year in school developing a fully autonomous lawnmower was that a bad thing for me to do (laughs) Like, should I not, like, should people, should I not make that a reality? Should people have to cut their lawn so they're forced to be active? Mm. Right? Yeah. Should we start disallowing uh, certain technologies to exist because people will literally kill themselves because they won't do anything? (laughs) I don't know. I think that's going to happen whether we want it to or not. I think that that evolution of tech is is linear and it's going to keep going. Mm-hmm. Whether we try and put the brakes on it, I think it's just going to keep going. So as long as people have a sense of morality and, and ethics, I would like to think that we're not like living in the movie Idiocus, Idiocracy, where, <laughs> where like, if like, if it's making money, let's do it. You know, mm-hmm. I think that there's always going to be like, people, you're going to have to vote leaders in who are like against that. You know, there's going to be ethical people that are on the side of humanity. Yeah. I would like to think that it doesn't make it all about the money. And and you know what, I, I have hope for the future, uh, just because I feel like even right now, I'm not sure if you see it in your day-to-day life or you think you're biased, uh, but I, I see a huge fitness trend. Like when I'm at school, all my friends want to do during their spares is they want to go to the gym. It's, it's becoming a huge trend, and these guys aren't in the gym to get buff or to get swole or to to put on so much muscle it's they're just there to as like almost because it's just the popular thing to do just as a a lifestyle choice i guess and i so if that's what we're already seeing like maybe that'll be a trend that continues throughout the generations yeah and and i mean i think even just that awareness is important of health and fitness because that's like yeah we know that it's good to do all these things but i mean we go back not even that far in the 1900s and like 
we didn't associate diet with exercise. We thought there were two completely different worlds that weren't connected at all. So like, as long as, and we've come a long way is what I'm trying to say. And I think that when our generation, millennials, whatever, we are seniors, I, I think that we're going to be a little bit better off than a lot of the seniors that came before us because oh. they may have hit retirement and just hit the couch. And they had no idea they were supposed to keep doing stuff. They just kind of started, you know, I'm stereotyping right now, but I mean, yeah, yeah. doing crosswords and whatever. Like I've seen a lot of fit seniors that stayed active, so it doesn't apply to all of them, but there wasn't that broad awareness. Oh, that's so interesting. I, I totally see that now. Like, like when we get old, we'll, we'll know to keep active. Whereas yeah. people who are currently old were always active and didn't know that not being so could be harmful. Exactly. Yeah. That's that, so interesting. That's, that's kind of, I guess, what, what keeps me hopeful. And like, you know, a lot of like older people, like it's, it's natural that your, your bones degrade over time and that you start to get that curvature. You've probably seen seniors that have that huge curvature in their spine and they're really oh, yeah, hunched sure. over. Like, I think like in their generation was posture ever preached at them? Like it is for us. Like, yeah, we also, we, we grew up with computers. We spent a lot of time hunched over. We get a lot of tight muscles that make us cave in, but there are people telling us that we should not spend so much time. We should spend a little more time stretching and mm -hmm. making our posture. And, and to bring it back to technology, there's even things like you, you can't go on Amazon without seeing things to, to improve your day to day life like that. I'm sure one quick search on Amazon, you could find 10 different things that you can sit on or attach to your chair to improve your posture if you have an office job. Yeah, exactly. So I guess that awareness gives me hope for the future. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think we'll be okay. And and I think the fact that we're having this conversation is evident that that that's a fact, right? The, yeah. the fact that as 23 year olds, we're questioning the future health of our society, I think is a pretty good indicator of like, hey, yeah, we're, we're thinking about where we're gonna be. We're thinking about where the other generations are gonna be and, and how, to, how best to take care of this world we live in. Yeah, the ripple effect that we're gonna have. Yeah, and, and, and what's gonna happen. I, I often think about like, when I was, when I was growing up, you know, the rule in my house was one hour of, one hour of tech a day. One hour of TV, one hour of GameCube, whatever it was. Just pick and choose. Yeah, we didn't have, like, the cell phone, smartphone. So, like, I'm growing up knowing, like, okay, this made me okay, but, like, I don't even know. Do you ever think about, like, yeah, the rules you're going to establish I've, in your future household? Yeah, with with my girlfriend, we've, we've talked a, a few times about, like, what's the best age to get your kid a phone? Like, yeah. I didn't get a phone until I was in, like, grade 10, grade 11, right? But but then there's this conversation of phones are so different now because there, there's so much more to them. They're not just a, a texting device. So does that mean you get them to your kids earlier? Maybe you think phones are more, more harmful. Maybe you give them to them later. Or, and it depends on where you live, right? Like I lived outside of a, of a city down, down gravel roads. I didn't need a phone. My parents drove me everywhere. They mm. always knew where I was. But if you live in the middle of the city and your kid's walking home from school, maybe you get them one earlier. There's, there's so, there, there's no one, like one size fits all. But, yeah. but to answer your question, yes, I've thought a lot about like <laughs> <laughs> how, how best to raise future kids because it's important this this world we're living in right now is not the world that we were born into it's yeah. evolved so much and i mean even if we decide okay like we figure out some established rules like okay this will be good for my kids then the the unforeseen factor is what if everyone else in their class is doing it what if everyone else in their class is getting the google eyeball that you don't think is ethically correct <laughs> the google eye replacement <laughs> yeah yeah, so even if you don't think it's good, if everyone else is doing it, you know, the pressure that you have as a parent. Yeah. I don't know. That's that's really that's really tough. Uh, but yeah, I think as long as you're consciously questioning why you're doing things, I think as long as you're not the parent that sees every kid as a Google eyeball, so you just buy your kid a Google eyeball, mm. I think that's a bad choice. 
if if everybody does and and I think I think the correct choice would be to sit down with your kid and be like hey why do you want this why is it useful let's weigh the pros and cons if you do get it make sure you're responsible in this way in that way you got to you got to you talk about it, you got to understand what the introduction of this technology could mean mm. and i think as long as you are doing your best to be aware of of the choices you're making i think you'll be okay yeah yeah i agree with you i don't know if i have much more else to say <laughs> i think that's a pretty good place to wrap it up we've we've hit the future and some good takeaways some very good long-term takeaways yeah and and a lot about why people hate us and why they're wrong (laughs) yeah i don't know if there's anything else we can do about it i think we just have to sign shake our heads and move on with our day (laughs) i mean i don't know i'm not making this podcast to change the generation before us like it's not happening yeah i i think it's I think this podcast serves mostly as as a to get people thinking, right? Yeah. Maybe you think we're idiots, right? At least you you heard the conversation and and you had an opinion about it, right? I think that's all all that matters is that we're we're thinking about these things, yeah. Because I think that's what got a lot of the problems we have today. I think that's where a lot of them came up. That's why a lot of them exist is because. People just did things without thinking, right? Yeah. It was okay to burn oil. We didn't need any regulations. Oh, what What do you mean the ozone layer is disappearing, right? right yeah. As long as we're being conscious, I think we'll be. I think we'll be okay. And yeah. as long as people like us, whether we have five viewers, fifty viewers, five hundred thousand viewers, yeah. as long as people, any people, are hearing this and thinking about what we're saying, I I think it's. I think it's good. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And if Google is sharing this, I'm coining Google Eyeball. So <laughs> feel free to message me if you have this idea in your future. Uh, I definitely want a uh, royalty on that. You know, I, I think the Google Eyeball will be a device that exists once Google and Apple merge. The Google Eyeball. Oh. I think that's where that's going. Oh, be. man. We, oh. <laughs> We're so close to this podcast being done without me hearing that pun. <laughs> oh. Oh, Incredible. Anyways, that's going to do it for this podcast today. I think that Christian had something that he wanted to say about uh, his uh, something that he's doing in his life. Oh, yeah. Uh, just two days ago, I started a business. It's called uh, Melody Artwork. Uh, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram. It's M-E-L-O uh, dot D dot artwork. I sell these... Uh, these pictures that are waveforms with captions underneath so if if you're uh, recording your voice you can see the waveform move up and down and make this crazy shape so i take those i put a caption underneath i look make it look all pretty and and i sell them you can buy prints you can buy framed images you can just buy the the digital file if you want but if you're interested you can check out those pages right yeah I'll, i'll put a link in the description to that or links to to those ideas um have you have you had any customers yet um i'll be your first customer well, you <laughs> first of all thank you yeah. uh and the reason i started it is because i did have customers essentially i, I made one for my girlfriend for uh, a present for something important um and then i made one for your wedding social actually that i put in one of the prize bins right yeah uh, and then I had one customer from somebody that I worked with, and then my sister bought one. Yeah. So so starting small, but... Yeah, no, that's an excellent idea. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a like if you like the podcast. If you have any ideas for future podcasts, feel free to leave a comment below. Uh, I'm working my way through a list of ideas and uh, potential future guests, but I will always read your comments and consider them. Thank you so much for watching, and subscribe if you haven't. It would really help me grow my channel. Class next out.